Halo Infinite it's setting itself up to be a Halo game that we've never experienced before. So in this video, I'm going to give you the 10 things you need to know about Halo Infinite before it launches. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Ever since its announcement back at E3 of 2018, we've been following the Halo Infinite news a lot on this channel, as in that's basically all we do. And over the years of trickled in information, some things have been lost, forgotten, or just need a nice refresher on, or have been completely changed since the announcement back in 2018. So in this video, I'm gonna recap the 10 most important things you need to know about Halo Infinite before it launches. So if you guys like these kind of analytical videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you wanna see some more content like this. If you wanna stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So let's get the basics out of the way. Step one here is what is Halo Infinite? Why is it different than every other Halo game out there? Because Halo Infinite is going to be a game as a service. It's essentially going to be the platform to play Halo on for the next reported 10 years, according to 343. So there will not be a Halo Infinite 2 anytime soon. Now, will there be spin-off games and things like that? Potentially, but right now, it all focuses on Halo Infinite. The game also comes with a free-to-play multiplayer experience, as well as a campaign paid experience that will be $60. Now for some context when it comes to playing Halo Infinite when it launches this holiday. Halo Infinite is a soft reboot, as what they mean by that is by saying that it still continues on the main storyline that we've experienced throughout the Halo games, throughout the franchise, but it's going to be a great starting point Point for new players to come into the franchise as well. So you will not need any pre-game knowledge to understand what's going on in Halo Infinite. Though my suggestions, if you want some more context before jumping into playing Halo Infinite, I would suggest playing through Halo 4 and Halo 5's campaigns. Halo 4 does a great job of setting up the events that happen within Halo 5, and Halo 5 is the game that happens chronologically two years before the events of Halo Infinite. And there will be a lot of similar story beats that get touched on that were in Halo 4 and 5 being touched on within Halo Infinite, but again, this is a soft reboot. You do not need to play these to fully understand the story. Number three, let's talk about the world that you'll be playing in for the campaign. That is Zeta Halo, Installation 07. A common misconception is that Halo Infinite is going to be an open world Halo game. That's not exactly the case. 343 has been very specific with their verbiage saying that Zeta Halo is an open and expansive world, but not an open world. To tell a cohesive, tightly written story, what they have done is made it so that it works sounds like similar to ODST, where you start out with a small section and as you progress through the game, the world opens up more and more with the ability to backtrack. And Zeta Halo's play space is massive. Now you're thinking, okay, it's big, right? But no, this is literally the biggest play space we've ever had in a Halo Halo game. Halo Infinite's play space is going to be multiple times larger than Halo 4 and Halo 5 campaigns combined. Longtime Halo fans that have been very excited about the lore of Zeta Halo are very interested in this because it has such a long history within Halo's universe. As Zeta Halo was actually part of the original Halo array before they were ignited to wipe out all life within the galaxy. With Oni scientists saying that Zeta Halo is the most mysterious Halo out of them all. Installation 07 also served a secondary purpose as a bit of a biological specimen conservation measure by the Forerunners, where many ancient species were held on there, most notably ancient humans, which is the reason why we saw those ancient glyphs on the wall that no one's been able to translate yet back in the 2018 announcement trailer. And the very interesting thing about Zeta Halo is that there are multiple flood research facilities on that ring. The most notable research facility is the Palace of Pain, where ancient humans were experimented on by the Forerunners in search of a cure against the flood. Number four is definitely the group that you'll be fighting against, the Banished. First making an appearance in Halo Wars 2, the Banished are a mercenary organization of a splinter faction that rebelled against the Covenant Empire and rose to power after the conclusion of the Human Covenant War. The organization is led by the brute war master Atriox, who we got a chance to meet within Halo Wars 2. Though Atriox is currently out in the galaxy trying to link these portals of form forerunners to have speedy travel within the galaxy, so your main villain you're going to be facing that we saw within the 2020 gameplay reveal is 
Ashram. He's a prominent brute war chief within the Banished and has inherited the position of second in command in the absence of the faction's leader, Atriox. Ashram rose to power within the Banished after he led the victory against the UNSC on Zeta Halo back in 2559. Number five, I want to let you know that this is not Cortana. That's right, the AI that we saw within the 2021 reveal is actually referred to as The Weapon. The Weapon was created for the sole purpose of capturing Cortana to lock her down to bring her to the UNSC. We actually had hints of The Weapon being created back in the Discover Hope trailer where Chief looks at his hand and sees that familiar chip but with a tag designation of CTN04530 which is one number higher than Cortana's designation number. So even though this looks like Cortana, it is voiced by the same actress of Cortana, this is not an actual Cortana, but something very similar. The weapon looks to be a very prominent character within your experience within the campaign of Halo Infinite, so someone you definitely want to take note of. Number six is that Halo Infinite is going to be the most widely acceptable Halo game that we've ever had on launch. We have it releasing all the Xbox One consoles, the Xbox Series consoles, as well as PC. It's been a hot topic within the Halo community of whether or not they should drop the Xbox One platform to make it so that the Series X platform can shine best and that the game is not held back. But I do feel it's important to make sure that the game is on Xbox One family of consoles as currently the series consoles are pretty difficult to find. With the game being on multiple platforms, this does allow for crossplay to happen as well. For your social multiplayer gameplay experience, it'd be fully crossplay, mouse and keyboard versus controller on Xbox and PC totally fine. Though, if you wanted to play ranked multiplayer, that's where you'll come across input-based matchmaking, where either mass and keyboard players will only be matching mass and keyboard players, and controller players will only be matching controller players within ranked Halo Infinite multiplayer gameplay. This is from direct feedback of the Master Chief Collection experience of playing on mouse and keyboard and also playing on controller, where, where issues of aim assist and no aim assist really play a factor within the high level gameplay experience of Halo's ranked multiplayer. So at the moment of making this video, there is a hard cut between input devices, but not platform devices. Number seven is our probably least known subject that we do know is gonna be part of the game. It is Forge. The only con concrete thing we actually know about Forge is that they will have an undo and a redo button, which has been highly requested by the community. Forge is going to be a huge source of user-generated content. You'll see new maps probably from Forge being put into the multiplayer matchmaking experience, as well as unique custom games as well. Halo has always been known for its Forge and its creativity between the community and its gameplay experience with comes of custom games, so I expect to see something very similar. We've heard various rumors and leaks as well saying that this forge is going to be the forge to take them all which is going to be tough to do because halo 5 has been widely held as the best version of forge within the franchise so to top that would be a true feat. Number eight, of course, is gonna be multiplayer will be coming with Halo Infinite, but it's a little different than you probably remember. It'll come with your traditional four versus four multiplayer arena style gameplay, which we've come to know and love for Halo, but it also comes back with the return of big team battle, but it's bigger and better than ever. With 24 player lobbies, big team battle has really become more like bigger team battle. When it comes to your personal sparring, this might be the most customizable Halo that we've ever seen. With an expanded Halo reach, it like customization system, you'll be able to trade out tons of different armor sets that you'd like to have, along with armor cores will have different themes when it comes to your armor sets as well. New feature of personal AI, which will be giving you match information to help you capture objectives and things like that. We also have the coding system, which is the brand new system within Halo Infinite. So gone are the days of primary and secondary color choices. Now you choose these coatings, what will have your certain types of colors, textures, and things like that. Give you much more intricate and unique coloring styles when it comes to your armor sets your weapons, as well as your vehicles. A huge gameplay element that's been brought back from Halo 3 is the return of equipment in Halo Infinite. Much like Halo 3, these are single-use items that you can choose to use within the sandbox of Halo Infinite. So far, we know of the drop wall, the grapple shot, as well as the repulsor that was showcased within the 2021 gameplay reveal. An interesting difference, though, is that within campaign, you can hold up to four different items when it comes to equipment, but in multiplayer, you can only have one at a time, 
and there'll be map pickups that you have to earn within the match. No one starts out with equipment. Along with Halo Infinite's free multiplayer experience, they'll come with new seasons every three months. The first season that we already know of is going to be called Heroes of Reach, but 343 has stated that they look to tie in the multiplayer experience more to the lore and provide more storytelling within the multiplayer gameplay, almost like Spartan Ops, but through the multiplayer experience. One of the most important things that you need to know before the launch of Halo Infinite is the Halo Insider Program. The Halo Insider Program will give you the opportunity to play the technical previews that are planned to launch later this summer. So what you need to do to be able to play these technical previews is that you need to go to Halo Waypoint and sign up as a Halo Insider. It's a simple, quick process, not too complicated, and pretty easy to do. Once you've verified your email and gone through all the process and see all the green check marks that you see right here on screen, then you're ready to go to play the Halo Insider program for the technical previews happening for Halo Infinite. And lastly, number 10, when can we expect this game to release? Many of us, including myself, were hoping for a release date to be revealed within E3 2021, but it's still set to holiday 2021, leaving many concerned that there could potentially be a delay till 2022. On a recent podcast, Phil Spencer said this about the release time window for Halo Infinite. We know kind of our range in the three, four week range. We don't have yet the exact day. There's some other things with some other game timing that we're trying to look at. Um, we'll have better clarity over the summer, but this isn't a month's thing. This is just down to a, a few weeks. Um, and so we're like, okay, instead of picking this date and having to move it by a week, which at this point would feel like a fail, like we don't want to do that. Let's wait until we're really solid on what the date is. But the team's very committed to holiday. So to confirm that it's down to a three to four week period this holiday when we will see Halo Infinite release. I made a previous video talking about this specifically about how 343 and Microsoft are essentially trying to avoid a Titanfall 2 experience where, if you guys remember with Titanfall 2, it released within a week between Battlefield and Call of Duty, two big huge FPS games. And many attribute that poor release window to Titanfall 2's poor sales and player count. So to avoid that issue, 343 and Microsoft are holding off on the release date to see when a good time frame to give a good breathing room for Halo Infinite to take the spotlight for people to jump in and play. My speculation is that it'll be after the launch of Battlefield 2042, which is on October 22nd, and sometime before November 26th, which would be Black Friday, so then 343 and Microsoft can take advantage of those high sales on that day. But as soon as we know that release date, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel. So if you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, I have a playlist right here for all my daily Halo news and information videos right there. So thank you so much for watching, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.